When you're in the market for a new cell phone, but aren't ready for that two-year commitment, make Yakety Yak Wireless your first stop. Our experienced sales staff will help you choose the phone that's best for you. We carry a vast array of basic and smartphones, and at Yakety Yak, you can try it before you buy it. Looking to save some money? We sell used and unlocked phones and provide the best in iPhone repair. Come into Yakety Yak Wireless for all your mobile phone needs. Okay, today we're going to put back together the iPhone 4S, and there's about five major tools that you're going to use. The first is a flat blade screwdriver, then a blue price stick. You're going to use a spudger, a pair of tweezers, the pentalobe screwdriver, and a triple zero Phillips head screwdriver. These should be all that you need. Now hopefully when you took the phone apart, you laid out all the little pieces in a proper order, like I told you in the disassembly video, and now we're going to actually attempt to put the phone back together. One key thing to remember is that if you do have a broken screen, you're going to have to make sure that you cleaned out all the busted glass, and if you have adhesive, replace the adhesive. The next thing you want to look at is the mesh. So this earpiece mesh right here you can get when you order your screen and that little uh, um, spacer for the front camera. So the first thing you need to do is you need to feed these two cables through the slot in the midboard. Now one thing, the digitizer cable, which is the thinner of the two cables, tends to get bunched up. And if it bunches up, the screen will still go on, but it won't connect right. And when you pull on it, you'll tear the flex cable. So make sure that you get it all the way in there. And pardon me for coming out of screen a little bit here. I'll try and do really well on this for you, but I'm holding it to give you a close-up view of it. So see, we've got it tucked all the way in. You can see the entire flex cable, and then the screen should just slot down. After this, we're actually going to go and install the screws. There's ten of them. The one in the upper left is the one the tape was hidden behind. You can see all ten screws here. We'll speed up the video during the installation of the actual screws. Now some of you are going to go and install this and you may drop the washers and lose them. Don't lose the washers. Make sure you install all of them because they're what actually help bind the screen and held it in place to the uh, mid plate. If you mess up and don't install those washers, the screen can actually gap a little bit which will allow dust to get in and if you pop a case on it like an OtterBox Defender case it'll break it. I will repeat that the best thing to do is to bring your broken iPhone into Yakety Yak Wireless and let us fix it. Um, you can either mail it to us or bring it in directly to our Colleyville location or you can call us at 817-399-1000. Here we're putting in the side screws. You can see the placement of the washers on there. The best thing to do is to have a pair of tweezers that are not magnetized and a screwdriver that is magnetized. That'll help speed up the process. This is the hardest part of the entire thing because it's just tedious. One of the th reasons why I install the corner screws first is it allows me to hold down the screen to make sure I get a good seal between the screen and the mid plate, which is something you should probably consider doing. If you see any gapping after you uh, assemble it, take it apart, and redo it. Because if you have that gapping there, the first time you push down on the screen or put it in your back pocket, you will break the screen. Okay, we're almost done putting in these side screws. Okay. Now, we're actually going to go and put in the, um, this is goes on top of the dock port. What this actually is is the speaker um, and antenna pickup assembly. And it's got these tiny little tabs at the top. And you can see them in this picture right here that you actually have to push them down so they fold down. Try not to break these things because they help hold pressure on the dock port. There's four of them. Once you get them set down in there, the dock port should sit in flush. And there's two screws and a little plastic tab that hold in the dock port. The screw on the right is the easy one. I'll put that one in first. There we go. The screw on the left has this little plastic triangle spacer that has to sit on top. It only sits in one way. And there it is right there. And just drops right on top of the where the 
tab is, and then you screw it in. Okay, now we got those two pieces done. Now we're going to put the screw in. And you see it goes right in through the top of that tab. Now comes the vibration motor that we pried out. The nice part about this is that Apple actually put on their motherboard a defining line, a little etched line, to show you exactly where it goes. So you get the contacts inside that little box, and then the top screw piece mounts over its hole right there. And once you get it in, you're all set, and you can screw it down. And it screws down as part of the motherboard. Now the motherboard goes in. Make sure you fold back all the flex cables. It slots in from the top and then lays down. The trick to know whether you got it in correctly or not is if the SIM card tray goes in and sits flush. And if it doesn't, you need to take it out and redo it. You can see here it looks like it sits flush. It's pretty easy to get in. It's actually easier than the GSM version. So we got that in. Now, there's a several of the screws that we pulled out we got to put back in. The top right hand one is the flat bladed screw. Um, make sure you use a flat bladed screwdriver. Don't try and use a Phillips head. You'll just strip it out and then it won't be any good. So we get that one in. Next to it is the one next to the camera assembly which also has this little attenuator that goes in. It sits on top. You get that in. Places down in there and then you screw it in on top. It actually slides in pretty easily. That's what the tweezers are for. Go ahead and screw that down. Now comes the center screw. Oh yeah, first we got to put the tape back on. Sorry. So we're going to put the tape back on here. That just goes over the screw and folds down on the side like that, nice and easy. So then we have the middle screw on the motherboard. And remember, all these screws are all different, so make sure you put the proper ones in the proper positions or the phone will not go back together. Okay. Now, this is the screw that goes in over the top of the vibration motor. And the last screw is the, again, flat bladed screw that goes in the bottom right. <coughs> in. Sorry, I dropped out of frame a little bit here. There, you can see it again. There you go. Okay, now we're going to test it by sticking in the SIM card and the SIM card tray and making sure it sits flush. If it gaps at all or it doesn't want to sit in there, then it's not in properly. So we're okay here. Now we got to go and reconnect all the cables. We'll start with the lower antenna cable. Make sure you feed it around the bottom screw and then into its little clip and then it pushes down. These things are very fragile so don't break them. And you can see it just clicks down just like that and it's in. Okay so now we have the, the uh, ones up top. Let's start with the camera. We'll put the camera in. Make sure the camera's sitting flush. Okay now that this is the little... Okay so now we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, other little flex cables in. First do the one that sits underneath the longer flex cable. So you got that. Now the longer flex cable. Make sure these are seated down properly because if they're not when you test the phone obviously things are not going to work right. So there's flex cable number three. We've already done the camera so now we're going to do the LCD which is going to be stiff so make sure it sits down properly and then the digitizer and finally the upper antenna which is going to be over on the right hand side. And again, that's kind of a little one like the lower one, so just be careful on how you fit it down there. And now we got to go stick the shield in, the top shield over that little cable. And it fits in, and it's going to kind of click into place. You can see me clicking it in here. Once you click it in, then you screw it down. kind of seated down. Now we're going to fold down the lower flex. This is the dock port flex cable. 
it just lays down, it has adhesive on it, it should snap into place. After this, we should be ready for the EMI shields. So the top EMI shield has those two tabs I talked about. Those kind of slot in from the bottom and then it lays down. Make sure you don't tear the upper right flex cable as you push down on it. It should click into place. And once it's in, you have your four screws. And again, all four are different sizes, so make sure you put them in the right spots. Go ahead and put these in. And then we saw the mid EMI shield, which goes over the dock port flex cable. We'll put that one on. It only goes on one way, which is nice. Two screws to hold that down. Okay. Put that in. After this, we're going to be ready to put in the battery and that tiny little attenuator that sits over the lower antenna. So first fold back the uh, plastic tab. See, by doing it with the spiders when we took it out, we didn't rip that, so that way the phone still will show that it hasn't been taken apart, which is nice. So we put that little piece in place. Now we fit the battery in. Snap it down. That antenna's in its, the attenuator's in its spot. Put our last two screws in. screw. Oh no, I got it. Okay, here we go. The screws are tiny after you've been doing it for a while. Okay, so now it's all back together. We're ready for the back. The back goes on and slides down. <coughs> And use your pentalobe screwdriver to put in your two bottom screws. Be careful not to twist on them too much because if you strip them out, they're almost impossible to get out of there. Just snug them in. And now you're ready to turn on the phone. If you did everything right, you should see the Apple logo. And I thank you for watching this video. Um, like I said, Yakety Yak Wireless repairs over 200 iPhones a month. Uh, you can reach us at 817-399-1000. Or you can reach us on the web at Glade Road, that's G-L-A-D-E-R-O-A-D, at yakitupdfw.com.